In this video, I'm going to try to catch everybody up to speed on uh, all the progress that's been made on my hot rod over the past 10 or 11 years. There's been a lot of starting and stopping, uh, you know, family stuff and kids and all that stuff. So you know how it goes, a lot of starting and stopping. So we're back on it now. As you can see, uh, the floor pan is in and there are a few other little rust spots I fixed down here. There is some more rust to do. Um, I do have to finish stretching the other wheel well and I got to cut the transmission tunnel out. Uh, that's a surprise on what kind of transmission I got to go in here. Really cool. Uh, we're going to get all this bottom of this car uh, prepped, painted, uh, transmission tunnel, like I said. Um, get all the chassis back in. Chassis has all been powder coated already. So that's just waiting on me, which that's pretty common. So um, right on. We're going to get this party started. I uh, hope you all enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
just uh, feast your eyes on this right here, this pile of stuff right here. This is why you wear respirators. I burned through, I don't know, probably five or six of those slit wheels. And this is the kind of stuff it creates. That's mixed with, that's got galvanized zinc in it, paint, fiberglass, who knows what all kind of glue, bonding agents they put in those wheels to hold them together. You don't want that stuff in your lungs. So I went for years without wearing a respirator. Uh, I did wear a grinding shield, but should have a respirator on. So hopefully I got nothing bad cooking, but just letting y'all know up front where your, uh, where your respirators. Um, sweep this off in the trash can now. I'll show you what I bought that I've been using. Now this here is what I've had for several years. Works great. Only problem is whenever it's hot, this thing fogs up. I've got all kinds of replacement um, filters for this. So I'll still keep this and use it. I actually have two of these, but for stuff around the shop here when it's hot, I bought this thing. This is called a Stealth. It's supposed to be able to go under a welding hood. Uh, I don't know what wel welding hoods, it didn't really say what brand of welding hoods it fit under when I bought it on Amazon. I use a Hobart Creator welding hood and it does not fit under that hood. Now, I don't know, maybe my head's big. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, anyway, this don't fit. 3M makes one that's supposed to be an under hood type respirator too that's like this, but it's got these types, these type of filters on it. I have a hard time believing that's gonna fit under my hood too. But you know, maybe there's other hoods they'll, they'll both fit under, I don't know. But because of that, I have ordered some 3M, I believe the part number is 8515 or 8512, I don't remember. If you look up 3M welding mask, welding respirator, um, they'll come up on Amazon or you can buy them from Uline. But um, anyway, those will definitely fit under my, my hood and I'll use this whenever I'm grinding. I'll just put my safety glasses on and put this on. Uh, you can see the inside over there. So Stealth. It's called an N100 half mask respirator. No matter what, something's better than nothing. Even if you have a surgical mask or whatever, I don't know, I mean, that's probably better than nothing. But just make sure you don't breathe that stuff into your lungs. Okay, so the last markings I made, if you notice, I kept wiping these marks off with lacquer thinner and putting it back up there. Because every time I cut a little bit off of this, I trim it a little bit, it would fit a little bit better. And the where the mark would be is gonna change when you push it down tighter. So I've got marks on here that are pretty close to where the weld line would be. Now, I'm still not gonna trust those 100%, but I bought a tool, an air-powered tool that will put a flange on supposedly and punch a hole for spot weld. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna try to use that tool to flange this up to where this will sit down in there and then I can just weld it in. Uh, it makes a tighter, a lot tighter joint if you do it that way. And the worst comes the worst, if that don't work the way I like it to, I can just cut that flange off and just weld it straight up, butt it up, just weld it. I've got my, you know, my little Harbor Freight clamps that I use or Clecos and stuff like that. But um, anyway, that's our next step is to Try to flange that with that tool and see if it'll see if I like the way it looks. Rock on. Mm -hmm.